Will Zewa, thank you very much. That was very interesting. And um, in conclusion, could you say a little bit about how you see the future of fragrance going? It's difficult to say with a degree of certainty, but there are definitely trends at the moment which, uh, which, which give some indication. Um, the, the big trend in mainstream perfumery is uh, a fashion for smells that are not found in nature. So basically, there are, there are companies that are making um, uh, new smell molecules, smell molecules that don't exist on this planet. And of course, the advantage of that is that they can do it very, very cheaply. And it's all driven by profit. There are uh, like six huge companies. And if you take perfume and cosmetics together, in financial terms, this is the sixth largest industry on the planet. So it's up there with oil and steel. So the profit motive. So that's one major trend. There's a, another trend is that uh, to a large extent, smell has been a neglected sense. So, you know, our, our eyes and our ears are very important. And... Uh, uh, but but smell also is 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 incredibly important. But but it's it's it hasn't had as much money spent on say research for kind of you know you lose your eyesight it's worse than losing your smell. Um, and there's a lot of interest in the psychological uh, aspects of smell because smell goes it, it, it connects to the limbic part of our brain which is our, our kind of oldest brain oldest part of the brain and uh, the seat of emotions and of course uh, all people are interested in that how can we use that to manipulate and basically how can we use smell to make people spend more money most people are completely unconscious of this of, of smell it's, it's something they don't notice uh, you have to bring their attention to it. Can you smell this or can you smell that? And then they say, oh, yeah, but they didn't get it themselves. Um, example, in, in, in the Middle East, for example, the smell of orange blossom is associated culturally with an oasis. It's pleasant. So if you walk into the foyer of a hotel and it smells of uh, orange blossom, it's going to put you in a frame of mind, which is nice, and that's good. But I think there's going to be more... Uh, research about how to incorporate smell uh, into advertising, for example, because um, it's, it's, it's very subliminal. And I think there's a lot of interest in that. But the other side is the internet is making, uh, is it, giving a voice to, um, to anybody. And so for the first time in history, maybe, it's possible uh, for small uh, companies to compete with large companies and in many ways they, they've got much more flexibility, they've got much more control, uh, they can respond quickly to market trends and uh, there seems to be, uh, uh, it's very new in the UK but in America and, and uh, one or two other countries there's definitely a trend towards natural perfume. We've had a revolution in food where people want to eat food that comes from the soil, not from a laboratory. Maybe the same thing will happen with perfume, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, a lot of legislation, uh, naturals are too expensive, uh, they're too unpredictable, uh, product repeatability and conformity is too important to the big companies. And they regularly reformulate things, uh, like for example, jasmine at the moment, is going to be reduced and we're told that the reason is because of its toxicity whereas you know we've been using some things for uh, literally centuries and now all of a sudden for modern sensibilities we're cold we can't do it but i think maybe this has got more to do with price <laughs>